Three, two, one. What the fuck is up, man? The world, dude, is nuts. That's what's up. That's awesome. It's I good. almost ran over a lady on the way here, actually. <laughs> It was That's like a the South Valley, son. <laughs> no, it was on Central. I think it was like a protester. She just jumped in front of the car and yeah. Oh, she got God. all mad. Too. Did you have a picket sign or what? I, I have some people around her did. I didn't see what it was, but. Yeah, so that's that's what's up. Well, I promise you that whatever they were protesting was not worth jumping in front of a car for. Definitely not. I can fucking guarantee that. <laughs> um, I saw, I'm very sad I couldn't go, but I saw the footage from Not A Living Cover Bands when you guys did Avenged. Dude, you can fucking scream. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I, I didn't know I could do that until recently. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of Linkin Park, obviously Avenged Sevenfold. And it's funny because, um, you know, like Night of the Living ba cover bands to me, like last year we did Linkin Park. Keep going, I'm just going to check the camera. We did Linkin Park last year and it was a lot of fun, a lot of screaming. And then this year I was like, how do we play a band that's kind of like on that caliber? So Avenged Sevenfold. And then I, I was thinking you know, like, God, just don't get sick because I usually get sick around this time. And, get, and what happens a few days before and get sick? Thankfully, I could still scream. Singing, not so much during this show, but you can't have it all, right? It it, it sounded great. Thank you, bro. Like, the, the sounded great. The footage looked great. You guys looked like you put on a damn good show. Yeah, people had fun. And then, of course, you know, after that, uh, afterwards, you know, the, the usual, like, people like, hey, dude, that was awesome. Like, that's yeah. kind of what I grew up with. I'm like, me too, bro. <laughs> um, it was just a lot of fun. So, because I know primarily a lot of the, your work is being a photographer, but how much of your stuff is musician? How much of that is, how much like music do you find yourself doing in your day-to-day -day life? I, lately, it's been a little bit tough to find that balance. Um, I think of it like a Peter Parker, Spider-Man situation. You I, know, was like, just, I was just playing Spider-Man too. <laughs> uh, the, the new one? Yeah. Oh my God. I already put in like 17, 18 hours into it. And yeah. it just came out Friday. Today's Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, actually, the day of Night of the Living Cover Bands, I'm like, oh, man, I want to go home and play Spider-Man. <laughs> um, no, um, what's it called? So I, I, I always say, you know, like, photographer by day, musician by night. Um, I've been doing music for, God, like half my life now. And, you know, now it, it, it's been why I mentioned, you know, Spider-Man, not only because the game's cool, right? But with Peter Parker, poor guy, he can't do it all. Like, you've seen Spider-Man, too. Right, like yeah. he's trying to juggle school and a and a relationship and rent his job, being Spider Man, all that stuff. So recently, I've come to the realization, like, hey, just like Spider Man can't do it all with superpowers, you can't do it all. So I've been getting rid of you know like other aspects of my life that do, that don't let me do as much music as I want to. Um, so currently, to answer your question, how much of you know the my day to day life is music? Um, I want to make that like a 50%, I guess, you know, 50% photography, 50% music. That's what I'm aiming for. Nice. So, uh, I mean, I do my own stuff, my my music productions at home. And then with the bands, I play in the Latin rock band. And then, of course, I have my, my own stuff, which I haven't been able to bring to the stage in about a year because, boy, it gets a little tough, but working on that. Nice. Good for you. And how long have you been doing? As before I ask you that, I saw you at, I, I want your opinion on something. Yeah, I yeah. saw you briefly at the Event Sevenfold concert like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can have two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. What do you think of their sound now? Great question, actually. Because again, like Avenge this, I, I would say now they're in my top three, maybe top four bands that I like. Um, and, you know, those change throughout the years and, you know, based on what mood I'm in. Um, Obviously, I'm a huge fan of all their stuff from their second album to um, the stage. And then there's this new album. I, what, what's, it, what's it even called? Uh, Life is But a Dream. Life is But a Dream. Um, it's an interesting sound. I haven't been able to listen to the whole thing all at once without any skips or anything. Sometimes I put it on, I'll put on certain songs in the gym. Um, but I think it's, some, it, it's definitely not as accessible as their previous albums. Um, I need to give it another shot. So I don't think I have a solid, like, opinion of it yet. Yeah. I, I don't think I've been, because, like, life lately has been so so hectic, and I love listening to albums from beginning to end, especially when it's one of my favorite bands. So I feel like I haven't given it the chance that it needs, that it deserves, you know? I'm sure yeah. it's awesome based on what I've heard, but what it, do you think? It took me a few listens to enjoy it, because I agree. It's yeah. like, it, 
it starts off very strong. Yeah. <laughs> it starts off very strong and it's and a lot of it almost sounds like City of Evil. Um a lot of it sounds like um like the heavier aspects of Nightmare, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but like the back half of the album turns into this weird like experimental like esoteric like yeah. weird thing that I wasn't sold on at first. And I think a lot of it was because I had been waiting. Fuck, because uh, the stage came out in 2017, so it's been six years since they put out. I an, think it an might album. have been 16. No. Uh, no, you're right. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So almost seven years Jeez. for an album, and then it comes out, and it's like, huh. I liked half of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to announce that the podcast is now officially sponsored by the fine people over at Chop Chili Company. Guys, this is some of the best chili you can get here in the state of New Mexico, and they are online as well as in stores. They can be found at Smith's, Albertson's, Sprouts, John Brooks, and Lowe's Corner Market. They have three amazing flavors that you see here, and they also have frozen green chili that you can get online. Go on over to the website, chopchilico.com, and get yourself some amazing chili today. Well, that's what's cool about them, too. Um, and that's what me and um, one of my bandmates, one, one of my best friends, were talking about, that the that Event Sevenfold, even though uh, they already have their form, they know what works. Like, they are professional musicians, yeah. um, that they are not afraid to take these risks and just write what they want to write. And, you know, like, whoever likes it is going to like it. I mean, we... St- all the old fans, even if there's a fan that doesn't like their new stuff, we're all going to go to the show. I mean, you were at the show, and it was amazing. I bawled my eyes out <laughs> during So Far Away. <laughs> I'm just like, Ooh. And I told my friend, I'm like, bro, if they play So Far Away, I'm going to cry like a little bitch. I think everybody <laughs> did. <laughs> oh, dude. It's beautiful. That was, it was an amazing show. Um, you can tell, because I saw them... When the last time they came through in 2017, mm-hmm. yeah, it was the summer of 2017, and I you could tell that his uh, that M Shadow's uh, vocal surgery really took a toll on him. Mm-hmm. He sounds good, like he still sounds really great, but you can tell that like, and even he said it on stage. I think he said that uh, that uh, he had sin- like a cold. Yeah, Sinister well, was backing him up. Yeah, Sinister had to back him up on the vocals a little bit more. And well, because there was a video that I saw that came out from their show, because that show was on a Tuesday, I think. And mm-hmm. so uh the prior Sunday they were in Arizona. And he was like, Hey, I like they stopped the show. And he was oh. yeah, and he was like, Hey, listen, like, um, I'm seeing a lot of bullshit on the internet about why we didn't play in San Diego last night. So if anybody sees this or is from San Diego, knows people in San Diego, um, I was sick. We canceled the show an hour beforehand because my four shots of prednisone to the neck didn't work. Oh. <laughs> Holy. So, because I saw that, because I was debating on whether or not I was going to go to the show. Because I didn't, because like, yeah, lawn's cool, but I want to get like closer seats. But then at the same time, I don't want to spend over $150 and all this right. shit. Right. Yeah. But then I saw that video and I was like, oh, this could be their last tour. This could be it. Or we can at least be in the last two to three years of In Sevenfold. Mm. And I'm not convinced they go on another world tour. I, I think they play festivals. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they um like, like the bigger like like just rock festivals that are happening right now. Maybe and maybe they go overseas and do like download and stuff like that. But I'm not convinced they do another major tour. With the way his vocal cords are going. Yeah. Well, that yeah, like I so he had like surgery, right? Like on yeah. his course so or something. Yeah. So in 2018, so I remember cuz I, I convinced a bunch of my friends we, and this is back when pit tickets were affordable. And so in the before times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all bought pit tickets. Okay. And we all took the day off. We all had, you know, whatever. And then they canceled it because they canceled the whole tour because he went to the doctor and I guess they found like like not a cyst, but like like nodes, like there. polyps or whatever. Polyps, yeah, yeah, those things. Yeah, oh. they, they found like polyps on his vocal cords or something like that, and he had to get major surgery. Yeah, and so then they take all the time off that they have, and then now he sounds the way he does, and he's openly talking about taking four shots of prednisone to the neck, 
and it's not working. Jeez. I'm starting to think this is this is the beginning, and it's not the first time. Because I mean, that's why they that's why he stopped screaming after uh, waking the fallen. Mm-hmm. I remember reading something about how he went to a vocal coach. Yeah, like a vo- yeah, it completely uh, changed his uh, yeah. technique. Yeah, because he was like, either you scream and you guys last two to three years, or you change the way you sing and mm-hmm. you have a career. Choose. And it's funny uh, that you mentioned that because uh, I also read somewhere that um, I think it was like 2013 or 2014 that he also he got another vocal coach and even it changed to the way he sings the old songs live. Mm-hmm. Uh, he changed it to, you know, be uh, less punchy, but, you know, to last longer. Yep. And it's funny because last night uh, it was like late last night. I got home like at four or something. Um <laughs> Yeah. And so this I, morning you got this home morning, at four. <laughs> this morning. Yeah. I was hanging out with some friends and then um, I was listening to well, like I was, I was about to take a shower and then, you know, putting some music on. Uh, I was on YouTube and then it came up like the stage and how we mentioned earlier that song and the whole album came out in 2016. And it was like, have you seen those AI covers where like, let's say they'll have like Chester Bennington AI singing yeah. an Avenged Sevenfold mm-hmm. song. Yeah. But this was like somebody made like a, a 2007 M Shadows sings the stage oh geez yeah so it's like what the hell like somebody made a cover of a vent sevenfold with the vent sevenfold basically you know yeah so i'm listening to it i'm like well what's gonna be the difference and you could you could hear it you know like it sounds like m shadows from city of evil singing the stage and yeah. it's crazy all this stuff that ai can do now um to where you can even basically now de-age your singer <laughs> um but i don't think he sounds bad by any means the no, guy the guy is a professional not. god damn like yeah. his he's got a pleasing tone and he's awesome so uh i didn't even think about what you just said you know that it might be their last i doubt it because i mean being a professional it means that he's gonna keep seeking the i mean he can afford to to also you know seeking the medical right. help and all that so here's hoping that oh, yeah, I, I hope i'm wrong oh me too oh yeah I, I hope i'm wrong <laughs> but it's just that's the way it looks like yeah and so i was like man i'm gonna have to go to this show just in case it's the last time they come through albuquerque but if you think about it uh metallica too like those guys were completely reckless like event sevenfold they all got their shit together like they got their shit together very quickly like they were very young like early 20s when they stopped partying so much and just yeah doing all the drugs whatever the hell they were doing especially after jimmy the, their drummer passed away right i feel like it was a, a wake-up call so they've been taking care of themselves and you know married and not living the extravagant rock and roll life whereas people like metallica those guys i guess like maybe into their mid-20s like they were still like james kept like singing like with with the with not the right technique you know like just singing from the throat as opposed to like the diaphragm and he also blew his voice out like probably like in 1990, 1991. So then he started taking care of himself. And now they're pretty much, I think they're 60 years old by now and they're still going strong. Well, Hetfield had to go completely sober to, right. to save his career. I know that much. Multiple times too, because yeah. he's relapsed. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. I, I And you know, you know, from the outside in, people give uh, celebrities a lot of criticism when it comes to stuff like that. But no one, at the regular level, could ever imagine the lifestyle those guys no. were living. You know what I mean? You could never fucking imagine the insanity that they experienced day, especially if you're a young single guy. You're in your mid twenties. You're you're like the hottest thing on earth, and you just ha- and you're going to city after city after city, yeah. country after country after country, and just women and and drugs are everywhere and you got everything you want your managers encouraging you to party yeah like i couldn't fucking imagine what that lifestyle is like well i think about um justin bieber is the one that comes to my head when you know like, even though we're talking about rock and roll right yeah. now uh well justin- he went so crazy he bought a monkey <laughs> yeah and then i'm like i th- <laughs> so i think about it because like um this was um interesting story back in 20. 20- 15, I believe it was 2015. My friends and I were in Vegas. We were partying, of course. Um, we were like in our early 20s twi- or mid to early 20s. Uh, I'm 31, by the way. So um, not that long ago, but also not yesterday, you know, like eight years ago. We're partying there. And then um, we see advertisements that Justin Bieber was going to come for his, uh, I think it was like his eight, no, 18, no, 21st birthday celebration. Um I think it was the 21st birthday celebration um, at the, I think it was at Omnia or Hakkasan, one of those two. And so 
we we talk to this guy uh the, the bouncer you know he we see that he's a fellow mexican like us so we're like <laughs> yeah we start like hey como esta compadre ah como le va ahorita va a venir el, el justin bieber y todo like you know we're like chatting him up like hey like can you let us in you know he's like all right bro because uh, like it was like a, a vip like event, event. oh yeah, yeah it was at, at the heart of omnia now i remember so it's omnia and then the heart of omnia i guess it's like a it might be a more exclusive part of it not sure on that but he's like all right go in the restrooms but don't come out for the next like 40 minutes and then you can come out and nobody will check on you yeah we go into the restroom come out immediately and we're there drinking and then justin bieber shows up i guess it was right after he did the roast of justin bieber did you ever see that oh fuck yeah i did it was that same day so he had just been in um I think that might have been in California or something. And then he flew out to Vegas to make his appearance at the heart of Omnia. So we're there, you know, Justin Bieber's like this close. And, you know, poor guy looks tired as hell. Like the dude oh, yeah. needed sleep. I mean, I'm sure he had been like for the roast of Bieber, you know, like since the morning preparing with makeup and all that. But yet his managers have him like, you know, like completely booked because they're like, oh, he's young. He can take it, you know. Right. So like, all right, let's put him to like, you know, do a whole show in cal in california that that the rosa beer or wherever the hell it was and then uh let's have them show up at, in, in vegas and just you know entertain people and homie was powering through it you know like dancing and all that you know people were shaking his hand and all that i'm and, sure the blow helped out a lot too let's be I, honest I'm, yeah I'm, let's be honest <laughs> i'm sure it did he was skiing a little bit that night <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm yeah yeah and then like uh you think about it like like me for example like by any means, I'm not famous or anything, but it can get a lot like how we were talking at the beginning, you know, with uh, photography, balancing just photography, life, a mortgage. Um, I'm not in a relationship right now, but when I was in a relationship, uh, managing that, uh, balancing it all out, it can get mentally draining. And, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, it can lead down a spiral. I agree. Spiral down. No, I agree. And I think just. You know, that's one of the things I was real thankful for that I went to a military school for high school. I was exposed to like a heavy workload at a very early age. So I had to learn time management very, and I've, I'm not the best at it now by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, life in general is fucking hectic and people just have a lot of things going on. Now, so there's some people just don't do shit with their lives and that's fine. You know, do what you want to do. But yeah, if you want... You know, if you want to advance your life in any kind of way, you're going to have to have a lot on your plate. Right. And like right now, I'm starting to, I really started taking it seriously again last week because as opposed to like three or four, I only did one podcast last week. It was on Saturday morning. So I had most of my weeknights open. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to start taking my stand up a little more seriously now. So I'm going to go out and do that and then take more time for writing, going to open mic, shit like that. But now this week, that I've got, including this one, four podcasts. Uh, I'm going to two concerts, and then I've got to do at least three mics. Nice. Let's figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But like you're saying with the management, probably the way the Trinos B, bro, he's young. He's like, I'm young. I'm still gonna take it while I like have the ability to work off of like five to six hours of sleep. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. I, oh, my therapist, when I was going through therapy a few years ago, um, he did mention like, it's, it's cool. Like it's, it's cool that, you know, that people like you, people like me have all these like different outlets where, cause you know, you're a creative, you know, I'm a creative and you know, we just want to do it all. Yeah. And then my, my therapist is like, well, at, at the time I was doing even more and he's like, you can keep doing it, but you're kind of burning the candle on both ends. And then that kind of stuck with me. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I can work uh, based on five hours, but then I'm like, but then it's going to be shitty. And then I look older and I, I get fat or whatever the case may be, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> which is yeah, like personally you. not what I want to do, yeah. you know. And so, it go, which is the reason why I brought uh, Justin Bieber and like how, you know, like how we were talking about like the rock and roll lifestyle and all that. Um, the difference is that, you know, these public figures are well yeah in the public eye and whatever mistakes they make we make a bunch of mistakes but nobody knows because we keep it to ourselves but they well all their mistakes are public so um it can get a little interesting do you find i mean i feel like it's a very obvious question but do you feel because you said you used to be in a relationship you're no longer in one um the more work you add to your plate do you feel less incentivized to get back into like dating or anything like that do you find that weaves in and out of your head interesting question um i'd say yes and no um 
So let me rephrase it just to make sure that I yeah. that I understood it. Sometimes yeah. I have to do that uh, for to understand things. So you're asking like if um, based on all the work that I do, if yeah. if it kind of like takes away the incentive of like looking for a relationship, right? Yeah. Sometimes yes. So it's like with a relationship, you do give a lot of your. Are you in one right now? No. Okay. So. But you've been, of course, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. So you 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 know like that 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 let's say like if if life is a uh, like a pie chart, right? And you know like for me, like I said, you know like earlier, I was like, all right, I want to do fifty percent music, fifty percent photography. Once you once I introduce a relationship, it's more like seventy, maybe seventy five percent relationship and whatever's left of the pie you know which is not good yeah that's not good so then it's all about like finding that balance you know finding a partner that will like understand like hey like you got photo shoots like that's cool like you're only free two days of the week let's make those two days awesome you know so i think uh it goes back to mr peter parker right here you know poor guy cannot find balance i don't want to be like peter parker you know (laughs) i want to be the guy that can say like you know what like i can give up this and that that I can only do so much. Um, I think when I was in my previous relationship, there was a point where I was in three bands, I think three bands, and then my my own original music that I was doing in the studio. Then I had a full-time job, and then I was also doing photography. So um, somehow it, it worked, but I was just exhausted where I couldn't enjoy those aspects. So now I don't have a full-time job. Now I do full-time photography and I want to, you know, like I've learned more balance. So now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm not actively looking for a partner, but based on the energy I put out, I feel like the right partner will, you know, will find each other and the right partner that can, you know, support, not support, but like will be supportive of the lifestyle. Yeah, no, that's a good way to put it, to support it. Yeah, and that can comfortably fit in that pie of balance. Yeah, no, that's a very good way to put it. Yeah, I don't. I I just find myself like, as I'm going through my day to day life, I'm like, man, if I was in a committed relationship right now, I would not have time to be doing what I'm doing right now. Yes, you know what that, I mean. That too. Like that's just some. I think that's, that's just some real shit. I think a lot of people don't really talk about a whole lot, you know. And I just, and it's not that I'm not open to it, but it's just like I kind of love the shit that I'm doing. Yeah. And and last week was really like a um like a eye-opener for me i guess because i was like okay like i'm gonna like yeah i still have my nine to five so i'm doing that okay i get done with this i'm gonna go like bang 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 and still i'm not going to bed till like 12 30 in the morning that's fine but i'm like i'm filling all my time with shit that i enjoy and there you and, go and, that's and, awesome you know and not that like i'm getting into a relationship to hate it because that's pretty stupid right but it's like i would hate to, like you say you have a partner that's not as supportive as they probably should be it's like, hey, are we gonna go out tonight? No, I'm gonna go do five minutes of stand up comedy at the fucking slice parlor because it's Tuesday night. Yeah. But I'm gonna stay there for the whole time because I like hanging out with comics. And I like having beers with these guys and, and gals. And I like and the the disc the discounted slices of pizza is on Tuesdays, so I gotta go get there for that. And yeah, I like the crowd, so I'm gonna go hang there for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> for two fucking hours. <laughs> And you, like at, you're at the point where like you 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 feel that freedom that you don't have to explain yourself. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's the so I I hear you like and and that's where I think like um that's an important part of I guess you know like learning to love yourself. You are content where you are right now, right? Like uh, obviously not to say like yeah no I see what you're going for. I'm mostly I'm I'm getting to the point where i'm okay with what i'm doing on a day-to-day life and mm-hmm. i feel like i'm moving towards something yeah, for yeah, sure yeah. but never complacent there you go yes yeah. that's like that's what i didn't want to like yeah. confuse it with yeah. no yeah same here like I, it the thing about self-love um and self-care is you know like having that ability to like just like you said you know you, you all of a sudden like oh it's tuesday let me go do this spontaneous thing and it's not about like um like for example whenever i say like i've I've been enjoying my single life. I've been single for about a year and a half currently. Um, and I hadn't been single in, you know, I jumped from one relationship to the next. I think it had been like maybe five years, five and a half. So that's over half a decade. Yeah. And it's a lot of your adult life too. A lot of it. Yeah. Like most of my twenties. Yeah. And so like 
now whenever I tell people like, oh, I love being single, you know, like the first thing that they think like, oh, you're whoring around, you love being with the girls and all this. <laughs> and I'm like, actually, no. <laughs> like, like n- <laughs> removing them from the equation. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, <laughs> what I find fulfilling, for example, like last night, like, um, Finding balance, like, I, it's been a hectic month, you know, like, you've seen, like, with Night of the Living cover bands, I was in a few um, shows, and then, like, a lot of photography, a lot of changes have been happening in my life uh, recently that it's been pretty hectic, where I have not been getting enough sleep, um, I kind of neglected the fitness, and it's, you know, I know it's temporary, so viewers at home, in case I look like a zombie right now, that's why, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is uh you know, like yesterday, for example, you know, Sunday, there was more Night of the Living cover bands. And I wanted to go to like mingle and meet new people. And I enjoy that so much, like just being there, making new friends, making new connections. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I also find just staying at home fulfilling. So for the most part, for most of the day, I stayed at home. I cooked, yeah. I cleaned, I worked on editing some photos like i did a little family shoot um in the weekend i saw that uh beetlejuice one right it was yeah it was a cute like yeah. beetlejuice themed uh father and son photo shoot the little boy he's like five years old dressed up as beetlejuice and we shot them on the green screen they, that's how they wanted it like on, on a green screen in my photography studio and we put beetlejuice background backdrop uh digital backdrop so it's all it's very fulfilling and at the same time like uh, there's that little balance between like I find just like being alone so fulfilling because I can find out more about myself. What do I want to do? What kind of let's say like, oh, I'm at home. I want to write a song. I'm inspired to write a song. What kind of song do I want to write? And then there's also like that little bit of like I kind of miss it, but just a little bit like that person checking in like, hey, like, did you eat today? <laughs> like, how's your how's your day going? You know? Yeah. Like that little balance. So again, it goes back to balance. But overall. I'm enjoying the single life. That's what matters, dude. And I, I think that's a lot of, I think that's an aspect of going out and be, at the end of the day, it's like entrepreneurship, right? Is going out and you kind of have to go out and stay out during these events to meet people and talk to people. And not because you're going from it from a strictly business standpoint, right? Right. It's good to have fun and stuff like that. But I mean, I know for a fact that if I didn't put myself out there and go out and meet people, like Instagram's been my best friend. Don't get me wrong. Like mm-hmm. networking on Instagram has been great. But if it weren't for actually going out and going out to shows, going out to whatever and meeting people and getting ingrained in some circles here and there, uh, no matter what facet of entertainment it is, this podcast would not be where it's at right now. Like yeah. it, it would not have gone on as long as it has. Because a lot of this has just been, hey, how's it going? Like they recognize me, I recognize them. Sparks talk happen. Instagram meet episode. Yeah, I mean it's it's it it's building a big network. I mean like half of these names on your wall right here, you know, like oh you you know them? What you know them? Like you know stuff like that. I yeah. think I think we met in person too, like at a at a show at Moonlight, at a sl- right? A uh, slum show. No, 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 no. You're right. It was at Moonlight watching uh, Lillian. Lillian. Lillian yeah. do her thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, well, I had followed you. Like, I, I had already yeah. been following you, but That's I didn't know. Right. I didn't know the man behind the <laughs> podcast. And then now uh, you started talking about it, and I'm like, oh, only kings. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so same thing. You know, like by seeing like our mutual friends. You know, we go out to their shows, and um, how you mentioned. You know, like. Well, my ex girlfriend was very like she was very very ent- entrepreneurial. entrepreneurial. How's, how do you say like that? entrepreneurial? Yeah, that that's the word I was looking for. You know, like gotta go out there, gotta meet connections, gotta always be making money. Like always, I like, can work, work, work. Oh, she work, was work. about that. Yeah, hustler, huge respect to her, and um and then I also adopted that mentality, but a little bit too much. Whereas whereas me, I'm more like organic. You know, like I just like to like I'm gonna go out and see my friends. I'm not here to like, hey. Do you want to do a photo shoot? Like I never picked, right. Yeah, right. so I feel you. It's it's awesome how like things just happen organically. Friendships, the the biggest one to me is like you know meeting friends and just genuine people who are creatives and uh, that's always a plus. They don't have to be creatives, you know. But it's always a like a, a plus because it gives you that extra bit of connection. You know? How long have you been doing music in Albuquerque? In Albuquerque, well, I lived here my whole life pretty much. We moved yeah. here since I was seven. I think um, my musical path started when I was 13 or 14. So it's it's a funny story because I grew up in the war zone. And so, like, I went to middle school out there, Wilson Middle School. And it was pretty rough out there. Yeah. And I thought, I, I thought like, that was my normal, you know? So, like, you'd be, you know, now I got, like, skinny jeans and I'm wearing black. Um, and back then it was, like, 
my peers were always wearing like oversized jeans. I would wear like size 36, 38 jeans and I was like a little kid and I'd have the the white belt with an old English E for Emmanuel on it. <laughs> so I, I, I grew up with like an identity crisis because uh, I thought, oh, by being part of this, you know, group of peers, I have Just to like... Subculture. Yeah. Yeah, I have to like that kind of music, which is like rap, hip hop, Chicano stuff and all that. Um, but my uncle grew up uh well my uncle and my mom um they they like rock and roll so like scorpions bon jovi my uncle loves metallica and so like anytime we'd go in the van like i you know that that's kind of the music that i absorbed so then when i turned 14 um i got guitar hero guitar hero 3 so many fucking that's what i love about our generation <laughs> is that that like all the musicians in this city that I've talked to, the common fucking denominator is Guitar Hero. And church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that, that's where I'm going, too. Yeah. Because, like, I started playing Guitar Hero. I was, like, really good at it. I'm like, okay, let me pick up actual guitar. I took a, a semester in high school of uh, guitar class. I was the best one in the class the first semester, and I was the worst on the second semester. Because the first semester, I was so eager to learn. And then second semester... I discovered Metallica and all that, Guitar Hero stuff. And so, like, then I was like, I don't care about what the teacher's teaching. I'm going to be a rebellious rocker. Teach me fucking power chords, yeah. bitch. And I'm, yeah. I'm, teaching, I'm teaching my friends how to play Metallica and giving them bad grades, too. And then <laughs> um, then I joined, I joined the, the worship team at church. Um, then I became a worship leader at oh, church, shit. which, again, like, I'm sure, like, a lot of the people that you have here, musicians, like, they, they also come from church music. Yeah, yeah. So, um yeah, that's kind of where, where I started. And then, um, well, the church always discouraged playing any, playing, at least the church I was in. It was a Christian church. Always discouraged playing or even listening to any music that was not the church's music. And not even like worship music. It had to be the church's worship music. Ooh. Yeah, so they put a lot of barriers around me as I'm like going through my formative years. We're talking 17, 18, 19 this, at this yeah. point. What happens when you put a curious kid in a cage, they turn rebellious, right? Yeah. So, um, but my, my rebelliousness was not like going out and doing drugs and just like getting wasted and just doing all kinds of like, you know, like hardcore stuff like that. It was more like, I'm going to like, you know, start making my own music in secret. So I kept it secret for many, many years until like 2016 or 17. You were a closeted musician. I was in the closet. <laughs> I was in the closet of musicians, <laughs> which is sad, you know, because. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like once I started making my own music and discovering my own identity, putting it out and like making um, uh, YouTube videos, which were actually pretty successful. Um, I need to get back on that, on being consistent on that. But um, yeah, I know the YouTube channel grew and then people, you know, like obviously, you know, everybody's got their haters like, hey, you suck, whatever, la, la, la. But I wasn't trying to like be like, look at me, I'm awesome. I'm just like, well, I like playing guitar. Now I want to learn bass, and piano, and then drums. And I want to learn how to sing. I want to I learn how to scream, you know? Like it just kept adding on. So I think I've been putting out music since 2017, um, producing my own stuff. I got the chance to produce uh, a record for ESPN last year, which was like crazy because like uh, one of my exes before we broke up, um, she told me, you need to quit music. Like you're already a grown up. You're already 29 years old and music, music is not going to get you anywhere. Then I got the ESPN job and <laughs> it paid so good. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. That's I'm, crazy. I'm glad I didn't take her advice. <laughs> so I've been, <laughs> I've been very blessed. First of all, to be able to express myself and yeah. just have fun. Like that's the main thing. And then when money started coming in from it, I'm like, what a great bonus! I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's been awesome. There are so many fucking stories like that where it's like you're not going to amount to anything. You're doing your stupid side project. I don't get it. And it's like okay. Yeah, I'll stick around for like another month and see what happens, and then just that month, and then boom. I, I I'll, I'll never understand what people get out of um, making somebody feel bad for what they like, even if they're not making money. So I maybe this is wishful thinking, but I don't think they're going out to make people feel bad. Now, granted, it was someone you were in a relationship with. Maybe she got pissed off at you during a fight and used it to fucking hurt you. That happens. <laughs> people in relationships fucking do that for sure. But I would like to think that generally speaking, when 
you referred to it earlier, as, and that's the perfect way to put it, as a creative, right? Mm. No matter what uh, creative endeavor, no matter what art form they're going out and doing. Um, at first, generally speaking, you know, at first they start it, people are like, oh, okay, let's see where it goes. Then they start doing it on a regular basis, like, oh, it's like a thing. Oh, this, maybe this does go somewhere. This, and that's like year two to seven, two to eight. They're like, oh, this is, oh, he's still doing it. Oh, okay. Oh, he's, oh, he's still, he's still, <laughs> he's still doing it. <laughs> and then out of concern, right, they're like, hey, dude, you're not 18 anymore. You're not 24 anymore. Get your shit together, yeah. You're still working. Because, again, a lot of these people, they put so much time and effort into their uh, creative stuff, they lose sight of making decent money in, in like a regular job, like the regular like nine to five or whatever job they're in. It tends to be either like the basic nine to five or like the service industry. That tends to be where a lot of creatives are, mm -hmm. right? Because the service industry is very fluid. It's very like pick your hours and that type of shit, right? Yeah. And a lot of people that are creative stay out late at night anyway, so they don't mind being a bartender. They don't mind going out and being a server and shit like that, right? And but they lose sight of making more than. 15 16 an hour because they're putting so much time into their creative stuff and they're getting like 50 here 75 here 150 here maybe like 300 a gig something like that so they get the supplemental stuff to kind of get them by mm. so then their loved ones whether it's a boyfriend girlfriend husband wife parent brother whatever it is i don't think they do it to bring them down but they're like hey like out of concern you you might not turn into Taylor Swift, dog. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're not going to be, right. you know what I mean? And, and um, again, I think it mainly comes from a place of concern. There can be a bit of disdain from that for sure, right? Just cause some people fucking suck. And there's a lot of them out there. But, you know, it's, but the other part of that is you, I mean, I hate to, you got to believe, but like, you know, you got to like have faith in your shit and you got to also surround yourself. You got to surround yourself with people they're doing the same thing and have the same goal as you. Mm -hmm. And that's not as, that's not to say like, so you can all fail together, but no, cause like, so that you can all succeed and rise like right. a high tide, uh, a high tide rises all shit, raises all shit. Absolutely. Right. Like it, it's a feast. It's not a famine. Like there's enough shows out here. There's enough fucking money out here. There's enough ad sponsors out here. There's enough, whatever you fucking need, just go out and get it. Because I forget what I was watching or what I was listening to, but the guy who put it like, yeah, you know, whether it's like a uh, musician, like doing music, doing comedy, doing acting, whatever the fuck, writing, whatever you want to do, photography, there is a there is a possibility you're going to go out and fail for sure. Yeah. But if you quit, you definitely fail. Yeah. So don't quit. Like and and that's the mindset that I've had doing this is like as long as I maintain a proper my proper nine to five job that is paying my bills right it's keeping me afloat keeping me fed got enough fun money and then I got enough money to fund doing what I have to do now thankfully I'm mostly over the hump when it comes to hardware that I have to buy I'm pretty satisfied with what I have right now I think the next big upgrade is we're moving in February into a new house oh nice so my next big upgrade is going to be a new table but that's like extraneous right i've got equipment that works i've got cores that haven't ripped out on me yet and i'm very happy with what i've got now but you know i still got to pay all my bills I still right. keep my shit together you know what i mean so as long as i have that base foundation until i get to the point where i am so am self-sustaining off of wherever this goes I, this truck's rolling right keep it pushing which is your I guess your version of balance, you know, like that, it yeah. all comes down to that. You know, yeah. you, you, you're balancing what you like right here and you, you still got the thing that pays the bills. Yeah. Like you're not just foolishly like, oh, I'm going to invest everything into this podcast and this is going to pay my bills. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, yeah, yeah. No, like it, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know how they say that, you know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's true. Um, and you've touched on a, on a very important point, I believe, um, with the whole, like, the, how'd you word it? The, the, the tide? Right. Yeah, a high tide uh, raises all ships. Yeah. And uh, that's what I like about so far, you know, like, I'd say 98% of the people I've met, uh, especially in, this, in the music scene and in the photography scene, are so supportive. Um, there are those like that two percent of like you know people that are jealous or just like that want to see you that 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 for some reason your success means you know like 
that, that it puts them down for some reason, which is, you know, a them issue rather than one's own. But I love how supportive everybody is. Um, I mean, whenever we go to the shows, it's it's a lot of familiar faces and a lot of it's so funny because um, even for like Night of the Living cover bands, um, you know, I told the boys because like we were we were getting near the uh, the date of the show and we had only had one practice with the whole crew because there was always somebody missing. You know, like life happens. Um, one of the band members would have an emergency one day and whatever. So we only had one full practice with the, the whole band. And so I could tell like a couple of the guys were a little bit worried. I wasn't because I, I, that's why I trusted them. I'm like, I know you guys have been doing music for, for years. So it's about that trust. And I told them like, let's just have fun. Like sometimes we see like these like concerts and events, like, oh my God, like maybe like there's going to be record executives or like (laughs) we we put all this like, uh, like unrealistic pressure. It's like, bro, I guarantee you. Most of the crowd is going to be fellow musicians, you know, like yeah. from bands that we go and support, you know, local bands, our friends are going to be in the crowd. And uh, and then that didn't help because then the my friends are like, oh, well, then they're going to notice all our mistakes. I'm like, yeah, like they make mistakes, too. We all make mistakes. Like the thing is like not like if we focus so much on being perfect, over polishing, like let's say like a song, working on it forever, like editing a photo for for hours and hours or like to being too afraid of like oh man i'm not good enough to perform on stage then we're never gonna do it and it goes back to what kind of what you said like sometimes you gotta fail and i don't see it as a failure sometimes you gotta make mistakes public mistakes um in order to learn well that's what i thought was so cool about this cover band event is that a lot of it is yeah sure there's like established bands doing things but then a lot of it are like amalgamations of other bands yeah <laughs> coming together because they're like hey like I need a drummer. I, yeah, you, I, I like this kind of music, and I'm gonna, and we're all gonna pull from there, 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 and we're gonna make this like the one that, uh, oh motherfucker, the one that uh, Leroy and Josie and Tina and all them did. Mac to, Miller, yes, to do Mac Miller. Oh, uh, they made up a whole new band. For yeah, that. exactly. That was awesome. They just pulled it together and did it right. <laughs> and I saw a lot of that in different in the different lineups. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit, like that's actually really fucking cool. And then yeah, you're doing it in front of other musicians. I see that as a positive in the same way that I see, because like a lot of the, as you can imagine, a lot of the crowds at, uh, let's say crowds is a bit of a stretch. Uh, a lot of the the small gatherings at open mics here are uh, comics. Yeah. They're all comics. And, and then maybe there's like a girlfriend that was dragged in or a couple of homies that came by or shit like that. Or people that just happen to be at the bar or be at the brewery. And they're like, sure, let's like turn 90 degrees this way and watch somebody bomb. Let's see what happens, right? <laughs> so... I kind of like that because I'm playing to people who know they they are exp- especially because I'm a new guy when it comes to comedy, right? Which, by the way, you're doing they, great. I've seen the clips and oh, thank you. shit's funny. Thank you, <laughs> but they are expecting me to fail. So if I bomb, they're like, "Sounds about right." But if I do even slightly okay, it's like, "Oh, nice, interesting." You know what I mean? <laughs> That's interesting. But the reason I asked about how long you've been doing music here in Albuquerque and you touched on the how supportive everybody is, from what I've been told, that has changed a lot over the last few years. That music here in this town was very hard to get into, very kind of closed community. But then post-COVID, it's like, yeah, who wants to fuck? You play guitar? You play guitar? You play Guitar Hero three times? Okay, I'll show, <laughs> let me show you. Let me show you power chord, bitch. Come here. <laughs> Right, so have you noticed that, like post COVID, as you've been going out and playing more and meeting more people, that just the uh, the mentality has only just become more and more open. I would say so, I, and I never thought about it till you just mentioned it right now. Because um, as I mentioned, I started make like putting out music in like 2017 pre COVID, and then I didn't start playing like actual. I mean, of course, played at the church and you know maybe a one off gig here and there, but didn't actually start playing consistently. Uh, till I'd say 2020, yeah, 2020, literally in the middle of the pandemic, my friends had a, a couple of my friends had a, a music project called Scorpio Season, and it was just two of them, but of course to play live, they needed, you know, band members, so I started on bass and then moved on to guitar, guitar and, lead, uh, and backing vocals, and we were doing good, we were actually coming up at, 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 I'm pretty sure at the same time as the Mango Kicks, then our singer moved to Florida and that kind of, but, um, we, 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 we were getting some good gigs and it was cool because we were not established. And so, and we still ended up getting 
a really good paying gig at uh, Bourbon and Boots. Like every Sunday, we were there playing two, three hour sets. That's a cool little place. I, it was uh, awesome. I went there for the first time, I think like about a month ago, because they were putting on a comedy show there. Yeah. So I guess the uh, the owner of the place really loves stand up. And so they started putting on shows there. It's not a, it's not a bad little place. You know what I mean? Uh, the owner or whoever puts up the decor obviously loves the Raiders. So that's interesting. But uh, I just see Raiders flags fucking everyone. Like, hi, <laughs> Raiders flags in a country bar. Okay. All right. Cholo <laughs> and country. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Um, but it's a cool little place. They got the whiskey I love. So, you know, nice. I was very happy to what be What kind there. of whiskey? Uh, Johnny Walker Black. Hey. Yeah, I love that shit. But anyway, it's, it's a cool little place. And that stage, uh, it's perfect for small bands and comedy. Yeah, it's and great. We had a good time, and you know, going back to what you said, do you notice that it was easier? Um, I I felt I think at that point um, you're right. When well, I wasn't in the I guess the scene as the kids call it. Um, I guess be, before that, I I never saw how close it was. But at that point, you know, like I started like it, first it was the the insecurities where I was like, oh snap, like these people are paying us uh, to play like butchered <laughs> versions of like because like, we 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 were still I mean three hours of material is a lot you know and you know it takes a lot of like making like you know mistakes and bad notes and you know learning our stride um but yeah like i'm like these people are trusting us to play on their stage and they're paying us how much are you kidding me <laughs> and then there was like uh the first time i played as uh my my artist name is lost in a memory i made it when i was like i came up with the name when i was like 19 i think that's a badass name i gotta thank be you. honest thank you because when it when it followed when that page followed me i was like ha this is like a, like a new like like band here now. Oh, it's man. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 a cool name, but it's interesting for like a, a solo artist. Like, hey, I'm lost in a memory. Like, it because I I always wanted it to be a band. So there was this time I don't know how we got the how I got the gig, but um, I got a gig at Launchpad, and I'm like, shit, lost in a memory is just me at the moment. I'm like. <laughs> I'm going to make it work. <laughs> when you walk in the interview and you get the job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's like, oh, shit. And then um, so it kind of goes back to my, my biggest inspiration has been Linkin Park. Like um, even in my songwriting, the way um, I do the little the, the screaming on stage and uh, the way I produce uh, is very much like Mike Shinoda, the, the yeah. rapper, producer. And so at the time, um, Chester, the singer, had passed away recently. So Mike uh, was doing some live shows just on his computer. You know, he'd, he'd take the computer, have all the backing tracks, one keyboard. He'd play guitar here and there. He'd sing. So I'm like, huh, for my first launch pad show, I think it'd be cool if I just do like a one-man show, which was like just suicide almost, you know? How hard was that? It was insane. Because like the program that I use, it's called Main Stage. And um, it's a blank canvas. So you got to program everything onto it. So I bought a MIDI uh, guitar pedal to program like my patches. So like if I want a clean guitar, then switch to a heavy guitar during the chorus, play the next song, you know, like the backing track. And then I had my guitar. So are you like my building key. a song while you're on stage? No, it, it was like more like playing the backing tracks. Okay. And then, but like changing the tones and then the patches switching between keyboards and guitar. There's videos of it. I think I did it pretty good, except, you know, it's it's kind of awkward, you know, like you you go to see a show and it's just one guy with a laptop. So there was a lot of learning from that. But the point I'm trying to make, and I'm not trying to be like, man, like Emmanuel's cool for doing that. No, like I was a, it, it was an interesting experiment where I learned like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> but it was, it was so interesting. Like the reason why I mentioned that is um, that the music scene is that open that, you know, like, when I was a little kid, like, at one of my first concerts was Bowling for Soup. At, oh, dude. At 2010, Janu I think it was, like, January of 2010 or something like that or December or whatever, um, at the launch pad. And then when I was, like, at that point, I was like, man, like, these guys are rock stars. Like, it'd be so cool to play at a stage like this someday. And then my first gig there as a solo artist was, like, me and a laptop so, you know, like I thought like, oh, you have to be this big established international act like Bowling for Soup to play here. But no, just a kid with a laptop and a dream can do it. <laughs> and so that's sick. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of people, you know, like if you have like a huge ego would be like, oh, that's stupid. Like they're but but everybody that like the 98 percent that I mentioned earlier is like, yeah. that's cool. Like, welcome in like you and your yeah. laptop or whatever. And then next times I've played there, of course, I have been with the band. But I I I. I felt so welcome 
when that happens. That's awesome. And I see all these new kids, like, um, like the Carlina band. Like those guys are. Have you have you seen them? I don't think so. Yeah, like um, I I think uh, once you see them, like you'll you'll probably be like, oh yeah, like I know I know a few of them. But like people like them, um, I I. I'm blanking out right now on like a lot of new new bands that are coming up, but they're putting in the work. And obviously, like there was like this time that uh, one of those new newer bands, you know, like I went to go see them at Marble, and then uh, at freaking Marble, you know, like now even like the Marble stage, which has been known to like just kind of gatekeep a little bit, they're letting in all these like new bands, which is so cool. That's good. And one of my one of my friends is like, oh man, like those guys are are messing up, like the the guitar sound sucks and all this. And I'm like, but dude, like that's how we all started, like. These guys are being brave by putting themselves out there. They're not yeah. waiting to get polished to like. Well, because like, it would be one thing. Well, I know one band that's been coming up recently, and I've been meaning to get a hold of them is uh, St. Levi. Okay. I've been hearing about them. Uh, I, well, so I met two of the guys uh, at Marvel, funny enough, because they had opened for the slums. I, I didn't make it to see them open, but. Mm. And I know they're opening for the slums and mango show that's happening next month. Um, nice. At either Launchpad or Sister, I forget. But anyway, anyway. It would be one thing if you know you pay money for a show, local show, headliner pops up and they fucking suck. Right. That's one thing because then it's like okay, either they uh, let's assume they're a good band. Okay, they had an off night happens, but if they have a track record of sucking, right? It's like okay, well that's bad on them because they need to recognize what skill level they're at. That's bad on the bookers and the managers of the venue because they need to recognize who they're booking. And I'm all for giving people a chance, but you know that's when you can start. I think giving in your gripes and your right. your complaints, like oh, why are they headlining? Like they're not good. Like uh, it, it's one thing I think also to not like a headliner for a personal reason, even though they're good. Mm-hmm. Like I've I've yet to hear anyone that has a beef like the mango cakes. And if they do, we can we can figure that out right now. <laughs> I love those motherfuckers. <laughs> but um, I can tell you, people are jealous of them. Oh, so, like some of them. Oh. Be, be jealous all you want. I wish they had their fucking skill. I have a healthy jealousy of all my musician <laughs> friends. Oh, I wish I could sing and play guitar. Are you kidding me? Those guys. Oh my god. I. I that's that's what I like. What do you call it? Like healthy jealousy. Hel- healthy jealousy. Oh yeah. yeah. I, t- I tell like, fucking Toby and Johnny from the slums all the time, and Nevin. I'm like, I wish I could play guitar like you too, and I wish I could sing. Like, yeah. But I just that's just not my thing, right? Just, that's not in my toolbox of creativity. But so it'd be one thing if you were. Um, like hating, or if you're actually jealous on a headliner that is talented, and you're like, "Oh fuck them, they're fucking." But yeah. it's a personal thing, right? That's one thing. But it, it's a whole other thing to be like, or to say, "Yeah, the headliner wasn't good. What happened?" Like objectively speaking, right. that was not good. What happened? It was funny. I actually, uh, when we went to the uh, me and my uh, roommate Joey, uh, he's on shift right now as a firefighter, but we had gone to the Avenge show. Okay. And did you were you there for the opener? No. Good. Really? Oh. Were they that bad? Bro. It so we so <laughs> we showed up and as we were we were about to check out of the merch line. Mm-hmm. Opener comes on stage. I'm like, oh okay, sick. All right, sounds good. And it sounds like you're getting a parakeet <gasps> and beating it against a wall. <laughs> That's it a is horrible image. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Oh, and no. we're like, what is going on? And like the mixing is off, and like the drums sound horrible. And like we're oh. like, what the fuck is going on? So we get we get our merch, we grab a beer, and we and literally like from the time that it took to because that merch line was quick. So by the time that it took for us to get our merch, grab a beer, and start entering the lawn, it was maybe 15, 20 minutes tops, right? Very fast. Um by the time we found a spot and started like like that's like we found a spot stood and looked at the stage they're already packing up and leaving, hmm. and we're like okay either they only got booked for twenty five minutes or something like that, like like twenty twenty five minutes, or I think they realized how bad they sound because there's no way that someone like a Vince Sevenfold books a twenty minute opener yeah. at a Sleta. because because if you because if you remember that show at least the way it felt to me. Is that there was a lot of time between falling in reverse and avenged? I was drunk as hell, dude. So I don't. I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember much of that time in between. 
Yeah, <laughs> there it was because because I think Falling in Reverse went on a bit early, mm. and Avenge was like, no, we're going on at our starting time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fair and enough. there was a lot. There was like a good thirty five minutes between oh, sets. Okay, so now it makes sense. Okay, yeah. Hmm. So there's a good amount. Of, so I'm like, damn, I think the opener got off early. Yeah, because dude, it was bad. That bad. It was bad. But that's also with a nationally nationally touring band at a at the biggest venue in the state. Yeah. So I bring that because that's when you start. That's when you can shit on an opener right yeah. there. But if it's some new local guy trying to stretch his wings a little bit, figure out what's going on, like and encourage it, them. And yeah, and he got he or she. They were very liberal here. Yeah. You know, they uh, they got lucky enough to play Launchpad. They got lucky enough to do Marble. Fucking sit and spin, dude. Let them have their 15 minutes. Yeah. All right. They probably have a fucking camcorder in the back going so they can review their footage. Speak from experience. They got a fucking camcorder going. Let them have their fucking footage. Let them have their stage time and move on. Yeah, and they can only get better. That's the cool thing about like putting themselves out there. And I think like um, how you mentioned that opener band, um, it was like Vampire something. It was. Uh, don't tell me it was uh, Kim Dracula. Kim. Okay, they that, did that's, not sound good. Dude. Well, yeah, I wasn't there to to check them out, but I mean, I think it's still cool that Event Sevenfold because yes. like they, those I guys agree. and their management, they are they are more than aware of like the skill level of like the openers and all that. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of cool that they're bringing you know some up and comers. Maybe I, the, I agree, and that's what blew my mind. It was like, why is there a shitty opener for like the biggest rock band in America right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? I was kind of surprised. Maybe they're having a bad night. It could Maybe be. shit was off, whatever. But I, I just bring that as an example. Like, that's when you can have your complaints. Yeah. Because you're spending a fuck ton of money. You need that whole show to be good. Yeah. You that, know what I mean? That, but that, if you're paying five bucks to get into fucking uh, Marble or Launchpad and it's a local show with brand new people, sit and spin, dude. Right. You're not breaking an arm and a leg to go see local stuff anyway. So. Yeah. And, and that's where. Um, I think that a, a level of self awareness as uh, that's where you know like us as artists we got to put aside our ego like if we think like we're good we got to look at ourselves objectively and especially like as bands like let's say like what well, you mentioned you know like the local bands you know like yeah they can afford to suck and have like a they suck here and there and get better and better and better but once you start opening for events it was like bro <laughs> you got to be on your game or like you know let's come back down the ranks a little bit yeah regroup and you know if you need to hire a vocal coach Go for it, put in the work, and then get back up there. Like the the stage is always going to be there. Exactly, and this is no disrespect to anyone that I've had in the podcast, but so, talking about self awareness, I think the best person I've heard speak on that is Amanda from the Red Light Cameras. Oh yeah, she's great, dude. She's fucking awesome, and she and I would just say to anyone who wants to listen to it, they can go back to the episode and find it because I don't want to try to retort what she said because I'm not going to do a better better job than she did. Right. Um, but her recognizing like, Hey, or saying basically, Hey, you need to recognize basically what you're saying, like where you are mm -hmm. on the hierarchy, where you are in that totem pole act accordingly, but aspire for more. Yes. Like don't be a dick, you know, don't be, you know, don't get like, don't be a dick to the point. It's like, Oh, well they're just treating me bad because I'm the new guy. And then don't get fool yourself where you think you're the shit. You yeah. better than everybody else. Cause you can regularly book whatever, whatever. Because there are people, I, I, th there are people that are like that, and I've heard enough about them, and it's very unfortunate. But I can it, see their faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can only hope that there's some, for lack of a better term, character evolution. Right, character development. Character yes. development. Yeah. Thank you. That needs to happen. Yeah, I, I, I do. I'm, I'm a huge believer of that. Um, I mean, even going back to the Justin Bieber thing, you know, like how yeah. the media would shit on him, like, oh, he's doing this and that. I'm like. He's a little kid going through like the most like intense pressures. Give him time to grow up, and now yes. he's a pretty cool dude. Now he's just chilling. Yeah. He's chill. Like when the paparazzi are harassing him, yeah, you can tell like it gets under his skin. But yeah. who, who, you know, who it, it would get under my skin way worse? And he's like, guys, I just want some time. Like this, my house is not cool. He he communicates how he's feeling versus just lashing out like fuck you, this and that. Um, which kind of reminds me, you know, like since you brought up the show. Um, the guys from Falling in Reverse, all the stuff that the singer was saying, man, what's your take on that? <laughs> oh, okay. That's, oh. <laughs> because I loved it. It kind of relates it. to a few of the yes. local acts. I, well, too. I think, I think it's, I think it's the country right now. Honestly, I, what, okay, so before I get into it, yeah, we're going to take a small break. 
because I'm going to pour myself a little bit of glass of whiskey. I'll be right back. Uh, no, I don't. I well, I do everything. I do everything myself. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I've been able to take off of my plate is the editing. Thank God. I dude. have. That's, yeah, I yeah. have a AI software oh. that does it for me. I pay thirty bucks a month for it. And like last week, I'm like, I, I got charged for it last week, right? Mm-hmm. My card. And I was like, ah, oh, I barely even used it this week. Who gives a fuck? But then I woke up this morning and as I'm like doing my morning routine and I'm like, I wasn't even like consciously like relating to how I was feeling last week. But I was like, all right, what do I got going this week? Okay, I've got fucking four podcasts. Okay, four podcasts. Thank God I got my AI editor. Mm, there Thank it is. Yeah, that's when the value hit. Yes. Oh, and so man. what it does is it literally... Um, once you line everything up on like the premiere timeline, mm-hmm. what it does is it detects the wave, the what's it called? The audio spikes. Mm-hmm. And um, you basically tell the software like video one is the guest video or audio one is the guest and so on and so forth. And oh, then it yes. just detects it and it does the, dis- it cuts out video, disables it. And then just does like that all the way. And dude, I've seen the videos. Yeah, dude, holy crap! I'll send you a uh, when when I have the AI run yours. I'll send you a video of it, dude. It does like a two and a half hour pod. It'll it'll once it encodes all the all the audio and shit. Once it reads it, dude, forty five seconds. Get out! And it's crisp. We are in the future, man. Yeah, it's crisp. And like holy and and if and if you watch like my episodes, literally up until. If you watch my episodes up until like, fuck, four or five months ago, the editing's good because I would take the time to like stretch in the timeline and go da 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 da. I've been doing that for the last two and a half fucking years. Yeah. So I'm fine with it. Like I accept it. I'm like, okay, this is a three hour pod. It's gonna take me two days to edit. Okay, like two days to edit of like hour and a half sessions to make sure they're all right and all that all that. But you even with how long it took me to edit those older episodes you can see the crisp difference because now it's picking up on things that I would skip because I didn't really care if if the audience saw me like chuckle. Oh, yeah. Or if it saw the, the guest shots. chuckle. Yeah. Oh, or wow. like if there was like a moment um, where we're just going back and forth, da, 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 and there's spikes, spikes. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm like, okay, who is carrying the part of the conversation? Okay, the guest. Only the guest is going to be seen right now. Right. Only me is going to be seen right now. And I would lean, obviously, more towards uh, more camera time being on the guest because, I mean, I'm in every fucking episode. That person's not, right? So I would obviously lean more into, like, editing, like, to where they're being seen. Right. But it wasn't as accurate. So I'd be speaking a lot off camera. And you notice that sometimes in some of the older episodes. But now it's just fucking Dude. laser accuracy. It's Ooh. great. And and for those who don't know, because I, I do a lot of video editing, um, gosh, it's it's tedious. Like that's the, whenever I get a, a, a video gig, like I, I, I always try to stay positive with, with anything. I mean, like the, the fact you, that you got a gig. Yeah. That's awesome. Like it's it's I'm I'm forever grateful to every gig. And then I get home to mm. the edit and it's just like, oh man, where do I start? And then like I feel like I like I just starting it is like the biggest hurdle yeah. of the edit. <laughs> Yes, and then halfway through the edit, it's like, oh man, we're like, almost there. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Then I get distracted. Yeah, and I'll go play like Spider Man or something. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> well, because it's uh, like, no, it's healthy to recognize. Like, yeah, even yeah. though you're doing the shit that you love, there are tedious things about it. And yeah. the, I think the biggest thing, like mentally, and I want to answer your question about the falling reverse incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mentally, the biggest thing about it too was like, I love like we can't obviously go for fucking like two and a half, three hours tonight. But like, you know, I love the moments where it's like, okay, I can like, we're about to rip out or it will be like using, the, I, don't, I never know it from the beginning, but there'll be moments during a podcast episode where I'm like, fuck, this is going to be like a two and a half, three, three and a half, four hour episode. Oh shit. And I get fucking psyched about it. But then when it sinks in and I'm like, fuck, I have to <laughs> edit this. Oh no. And it's like, fuck me. Right. It sucks. Yeah. Um, but now, um it's still in its beta phase so like and i don't know if it's just how my cameras work or whatever but after like it's very weird it's like after three hours and five minutes of footage the camera stops recording on one file on the sd card and it opens another file makes sense yeah so it'll say like like with like you know video and then video one right and so the AI, wherever it cuts right there on the timeline for that first thing, 
it'll stop recording. So like for the first three hours and some change, or it'll stop editing it. So the first three hours and some change, it'll chop it all up. But then after that, I have to do it myself, oh. which is fine. Yeah. Like I will take it. <laughs> first world problems right yes, there, dude. exactly. <laughs> Holy shit. Exactly. I will take it. Um, But so for everyone that wasn't at the show or hasn't been on those tours, I'd imagine it's not the first city they said it in. Um, It was funny because so people don't know about Ronnie Radke. Um. I have the utmost respect for the guy, and here's why. He got into some sexual assault and rape charges like a couple years ago, right? And, of course, this is at the height of the Me Too movement. The media exploded it. And this is also like right after he had gotten out of prison uh, for the drug charges he had and shit like that. Like, okay, that's one thing. He did his time. He went to rehab, all that stuff. Good for him. Yeah. But obviously, when you tell someone that, hey, this guy's a fucking rapist, uh, he's a, a predator, it's like, ah, oh, okay, maybe maybe I don't support you anymore. So, but, of course, high of the Me Too movement, the media takes the story, explodes it. And then what the media didn't report on recently is so the reason why it, there's only the explosion with no result is because it came out that those stories were unfounded. They had no basis of fact, and these wow. women were lying about him. Yeah, they were lying. He never raped anybody. So now, if you look into it, he's going around to every news outlet that printed these stories calling him a rapist, and he's suing them for libel. Oh, And he's snap. winning. He just won a, a lawsuit like eight months ago or so against the New York Post because he's just suing them for fucking libel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I fucking that love it. The truth always comes out, Oh, man. yeah, I love it. But anyway, he, he got into trouble recently because the lead singer of As I Lay Dying got kicked out of the band. I don't know if you heard about this or not. He got kicked out of the band for making, quote unquote, transgender, um, like transphobic remarks or um, just something that was like non-supportive of, um, I'm losing the terms. Uh, like non-binary people? No, no, no. Or? It's uh, not gender affirming. Oh, okay. that's what it gotcha, was. Gotcha, gotcha. So, and I forget what he said, but, and props to this guy for at least, even if I don't agree with what he said, because again, I frankly just don't remember. He put out this big apology about what happened. Two weeks later, as I lay dying, his new album comes out. He's the lead singer. He's been with them for years. He's not on the album. It's all new shit. And he had no idea. They replaced him? Yeah. The guy from Asile Dying? Yeah. Oh. And then, so he sees that and he goes on the internet and he goes, hey, um... I found out I'm not in the band anymore when you guys found out I'm not in the band anymore. This is fucking bullshit. They're cowards. The management are cowards. He what? went off. <laughs> he went off. So then Ronnie Radke, he goes, that's kind of fucked up, dude. Um, And I think he should have the right to say whatever he wants to say. And if you're going to kick a man out of his band, you should tell him to his face. That's the, And as far as I know, that's the gist of what he said. So he was... To the left, like the hyper left, right? Because I separate liberals from leftists. I think those are two very different categories. So the hyper leftists took that and were like, he's a fucking anti trans, he's a da 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 da, all this shit gets blown up in the media. So then flash forward to the show. So throughout Falling in Reverse's set, like the first half, nobody was fucking with it. Nobody. Right. Like you, I, I was kind of. I was unsure because the thing didn't come to mind, right? And I looked around and I was like, "Why? This? These are? This is good music? Like what? The, the music was great. Yeah, dude, what the yeah. fuck you assholes doing? And there's like pockets of people like in the pit, mm -hmm. like in the railing right next to the stage that were vibing with it. There weren't even any mosh pits. And I'm like, "What the fuck is going on? And then it clicked, and I was like, "Oh, we're in New Mexico." <laughs> uh, very liberals. Oh, they don't like this guy. So they do like four songs or so and he stops the concert and he goes for if any of you guys out here hating look around and find the people next to you that are like the music and get and he's like get like get your head out of your ass or stop fucking around or something like that and everyone's like whoa what the fuck and so my buddy joey he was like what is he talking about and i told him what was going on it's like oh i had no idea that's fucking stupid he's right <laughs> so then so then uh he goes what does he say? He says about how um, he believes everyone needs, in a very well-articulated way, because he won over the whole crowd. 
he won over the whole amphitheater. Yeah, because like, at one point people were like booing, boo, yeah. play some music, stop talking. Yeah. And then Well no, some people in the lawn were booing what he was saying. And I heard people yell like transphobe, you piece of shit. I didn't even hear that. Oh yeah. I, oh. Bet, you, I bet you already fucking it was by then, you know uh, what I mean? <laughs> I, I wasn't that sloshed. But uh no, I, I was fuck. having fun. Nah, I was just vibing with, with the music. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, there were people around me that were like yelling transphobe, piece of shit, bigot, motherfucker, stuff like that, right? Yeah. So then he the bullet points of what he was saying is, again, I don't want to try to retort what he said because he said it a lot better than I did. But basically, what he was saying is he goes, everyone deserves the right. This is America. Everyone deserves the right to speak what they're saying. Um, even if it offends people, you need to open up your mind. If the minute you get offended, you need to stop getting mad and become open-minded and figure out why the person is saying what they're saying. And then he calls out Spirit Box. And he goes, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but Spirit Box was on this tour and they dropped out of the tour because they didn't want to be associated with me. And he goes, they're still friends. We still love them. But understandably so, but the way the, the media has changed these days, they were afraid. And they dropped out. But no. It, he goes, Matt from Avenged Sevenfold went out on his own social media pages and supported me. I that remember is, that. Yeah. And he goes, that is the type of friend all of you deserve and all of you need right now. And for all of you that are booing, you need that friend more than you, than you realize. And the crowd just fucking... <gasps> is fucking erupted i remember that and then the fucking idiot he goes (laughs) he goes he kept talking that that was the issue he should have he should have stopped right there yeah like you're good you got the crowd bro. but then he goes yeah you need to be allowed to say whatever you believe unless you're a racist (laughs) i have a video of all that like on the, like the real kind of racist, not the kind that puts on Twitter on your Twitter bio. Oh like yeah, like well, because he like he conflated racist with like something with now. like non-binary yes. trans people, and, and that's I'm, where it, dude. It was like dude, like take the win, <laughs> dude, and then. I'm like, he was oh like, my he was like, God. yeah, you, you should be able to say whatever you want to people. <laughs> Unless you're a racist, and I'm talking a real racist, not the type of people who put in your Instagram or your Twitter bio all those letters and numbers and the and your pronouns. Yeah, it's like, buddy. He's like, and then he and beyond that, he's like, I see a bunch of you weird motherfuckers here in the crowd and all this. And then he point, I guess he pointed at a person because I hear he's like, you're one of them, aren't you? Maybe like one person like yelled at him. I'm yeah, like, dude. No. You know, he goes, he goes, yeah. I see a bunch of you weird motherfuckers in the crowd here tonight. All you colored hair people. Yeah, like you. And it's like, dude. Oh my god, Stop dude! It. So yeah, that, that's kind of where. Like, <laughs> and I don't know how he maintained the crowd after that. I don't know how the music. he did it. it but was the music. Yeah, I guess. But like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, like he had me until he said that. I was like, okay, buddy. Like, I get what you're trying to say, yeah, yeah. but you should not have included the again the hyper left people yeah. with racist at least in that context yeah like because a lot of hyper left people for whatever reason hate white people which is racism reverse racism is racism but right. in that instance just stop with don't be racist everyone can get behind that yeah like <laughs> it, it, it's vague but it's like <laughs> like you're still you're still standing for what you believe. It's you don't so have to like silly. go into like all the, like the tiny like little bits of like politic or whatever you. Be- oh man, yeah. No, after that, even like I was like, oh dude, like I want to hear a song, you know? Like, yeah, play, play something awesome. Yeah, same. They kicked ass musically, homie. Um, yeah, homie's really very well. outspoken. Yeah, it's a fair point, you know, like that you, you do deserve the right to you know free speech, whatever you believe in, and yeah. but yeah, sometimes you can take it a little far. The, the part where he's like, yeah, guys, I'm an asshole. I'm proud of it, basically. And I'm like, huh. Yeah. Um, well, well, I, he was doing that to intro that song. Um, oh, because that's what the song says. That's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, just Like You. Yeah, that song, Just Like You. He was doing that because he was because the chorus of that song is, I am aware that I am an asshole. I don't really listen to him, so, but yeah. that, that kind of like uh, sounded yeah. familiar. I'm like, I've heard this somewhere. Yeah, that's that's why he was doing that intro. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. But anyway, before we get out of here, yeah, I can't let you leave until we talk about your photography. Yeah. In depth a bit. How long have you been doing photography? Photography started with the iPhone 4. That- it's so Hell funny. Yeah. It's funny. Okay, okay. That's I was thinking about that earlier today. I'm going to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From your point of view, with smartphones, making photography accessible to people, do you feel like without accessible to people, do you feel like without the smartphone, 
photography would not be as big right now as it is? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of leads to uh, what I was going to mention about the iPhone. You know, interesting story. Like when the iPhone 4 came out, this was like 2010. And it was uh, it was my high school graduation gift that my mom got me. So at the time, the photos were great. And then there was like editing apps that had like right. uh, filters, which were new at the time. Yeah, they were and just coming out. They were just coming out. Instagram came out that year, 2010. Excuse me. Um, so it made it easy for everybody to share. And of course, you know, like the filters, you look at the Instagram filters and they're ugly now. Um, but I, I, at the time, like I would take my friends from the church and we'd be like, yeah, let's go do a cool photo shoot. So we would go downtown. And I remember we did one like behind the, the inside out building, which like, at the time it had just barely burnt down. So we were like shooting out there, putting all these cool like filters in, like right. editing and all that. And then so from there um yeah it, it kind of stuck to me like i'm like oh wow i love taking pictures and i'm still to this day the the friend that you know when we're like at shows or like out hanging about i'm like hey guys let's take a selfie you know which is i don't know like uh, at least with my m group of male friends nobody takes selfies and i'm like no dude like i i i, I got everybody tagged on my phone like I'll, I'll pull up like this friend and like how many photos do i have of them 1256 or something you know yeah. so i'm that friend that keeps the memories that's awesome well and, dude like that's that is something when I go out, so, so I need to get better about. Because um, I don't want to take this conversation a drastically different, uh, it all a, a drastically different yeah. thing. But whenever I have a friend pass away, I'm always like, I wish I had more pictures. Yes. You know what I mean? And so, especially with our generation, it happens a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. Through every, almost every way you can pass away, someone between the ages of 25 and 38 does. And it's just happening more and more and more. So, uh, that's awesome that you do that. So I'm, I'm trying to consciously get better about that. Yeah. Yeah. And just capturing the moment and, you know, just being goofy. And it, it's always too good to just look back. And you know, sometimes we I'll be telling a story and like, oh, do you remember that time back in like 2016 when we did this, did this and that? Oh, yeah, we were so young. I'm like, actually, I got pictures from that. Check it out. And we look at how young we are and we we can. It just brings us back. So, you know, using smartphone um, photography, that's what got me started um when we would go on the church trips on the retreats and all that you know i still you know got all those memories and you know little by little i'm like okay now i want to take it more seriously i bought my first dslr i think in like 2014 in that same year i enrolled in school in unm for a photography class so i did really good actually like because i loved it like it wasn't like that i had the talent or anything it was like about loving it being passionate so I looked f like that's the first time in my life when like I because I'm not a morning person. I mean, you see my story sometimes I'm up at like four in the morning making music, editing photos or whatever the case may be. And so that was like the the first time in my life that I actually looked forward to waking up early and, you know, going to school at UNM and taking the photography classes. Um, I took the the black and white photography, which was amazing, you know, of shooting analog with all the chemicals and all that. And then from there, I, you know, like here and there, just like with any, I guess like it's a common thing with artists that, you know, we're like, oh, I'm not good enough to like start charging people money and all that. So I had to get over that. And then I started doing like paid photo shoots like in 2015, 2016, little by little. And of course, I look back at those photos. And I'm like, they're not bad, but damn, somebody spent money on this. <laughs> But again, <laughs> well, that's all part. That's all part of the it's, craft. Though. It's part of it. You gotta like, you know, like you gotta believe in yourself. And even when you don't believe, like at points when I was like, ah, I don't know about this, you know, people would believe in me and with their graduation. And even now, you know, like I'm very thankful. Like I usually send a message, uh, and you know, it's from the heart. Like now that I've been doing that, that now it's my full time thing. That's what pays the bills, the photography, and it's not only a job, but the thing I'm passionate about. I love making that connection with the people give them the, giving them the memories which sounds a little cliche but for real like when whenever i get that message it's not so much that it hits the ego like oh my god these are amazing i love them it doesn't hit the ego it hits the heart like man like that's something that these guys are gonna have for the rest of their life and just like i have those um selfies uh, you know on an iphone 4 4s that i can look back on and you know like they're shitty quality relatively speaking and i have so much like fondness for those photos these people are going to have these high quality studio or whatever the case may be. So they're going to have the same feeling that I have, but you know, with better quality. So, um, yeah, I, I love it. That's fucking awesome, dude. So you, you started taking, uh, paid gigs at 2015 mm -hmm. around there. When did it get to the point where this is now your full-time job? 
Oh, uh, interesting question, actually, because uh, so I was working at Verizon for I think I worked there like from 2016 till 2021, actually. And that job spoiled me because it was literally like sitting down in a, in a chair like this for eight hours. And, you know, uh, I was working from I, I started the call center for like a year or two and then went to working from home before even before the whole pandemic. I was working from home. So I. I I got very complacent in the sense that, you know, I wouldn't, I would no longer get up and make breakfast and get ready. I would just be in, you know, in my pajamas all day. Like the room, if you went in there, you don't want to smell what it smelled like after, <laughs> after eight hours of just sweating, not taking a shower in the morning. And yeah, I get so you. I was very complacent, but getting paid a lot of money. Um, I made really good money there. And, you know, I'd be doing the photography on the side here and there. But then it got to the point where it's like, okay, like, I, I am too comfortable. Like, I do not see the sunlight anymore some days. And um, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I was like, okay, how do I transition into photography? So, which is, you know, like, I guess something that um, that artists, you know, like, sometimes they want to go full time. And, you know, like you think of that transitional period, like, oh my God, what am I going to do without making this much at Verizon? So that that was my main concern until one day I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, just take the leap. You know how they say, like, when you start getting those butterflies, that's when you got to jump. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And it was tough. Like, you know, just like, I'm like, I don't want, like, my goal is to not have a nine to five. I don't know for how long, if it's for the rest of my life, so be it. But um, yeah, I just I quit. And um you know, just started working on my marketing. Uh, that's when I started my website and on on Google. You know, like listing as a photographer, and it worked. It worked. There was, you know, it's 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 not even where like because sometimes there there'd be months where it's like, oh shit, like I'm in the negatives, and then there'd be months where like, holy crap, where all this money come from? You know, there's like slow seasons. I just learned apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when when was this that you decided to take the leap? 20 actually so it's about to be november uh two years ago nice two years ago i took that leap uh then i uh i got a photo studio downtown well in front of unm actually which is cool because like it comes full circle i went to school over there at unm and now i have my little studio. oh so you have like a office space yeah it's huge it's huge i'm actually gonna get rid of it next week i'll tell you a little bit more on that but uh this was may of last year um this big building and at this point i was uh i was in my last relationship um, I was still together with, um, with this girl and she's the one that I mentioned that has this very, what was the word? Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial. Yeah, that, oh my goodness. That word. Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial. That's a hard word. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we were, we were going to start a business together. So basically like it was going to be half photo studio and she was kind of experimenting with what she wanted to do. She did a lot of like apparel and custom products with like, uh, it's kind of like a 3d printer, but it's like a big ass engraver machine like very expensive okay um and then literally uh so we're all we're both working really hard to uh what's it called like make the place look nice and yeah. then um i think like probably like a month after that that's when the relationship ended so i, I stuck with the place and the place was too big like it was too big for like a photography yeah. studio it, but it, it, was, was, it was gonna house two businesses so yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it was actually more expensive than my mortgage and so, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was like having another house. It was, it, it was, it's nice to have like a little home away from home. Yeah. But um, how I mentioned early in the podcast that now, like as of like this month and last month, I've been going through a lot of changes and realizing like, hey, this pie cannot hold all of this, you know? So a big chunk of that was like, hey, like that studio is very expensive. I'm making amazing photos in it, but I'm like, this thing's got to go so I can focus more on music and I'm still going to be able to do studio stuff. So I decided this month, like earlier this month, I decided like, hey, this will be my last month. I told the uh, landlord, the landlord, like this will be my last month. So, you know, next week will be my last month. I have a few photo shoot schedule there. So it's all a part of, uh, it goes back to what we were talking about, like the, not so much like failures, but like learning lessons. Like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like I tried it. I tried the whole studio thing. And I'm like, well, it's not for me at the moment. Having yeah. my, running my own freaking studio in front of UNM. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this whole, the past two years of just going full-time photography and videography too, um, I've learned a lot. Like I learned a lot about mainly, it goes back to balance. Yeah. What fits, what doesn't fit, different kinds of shoots. Um, you know, like lately I've been doing a lot of artistic nudes. 
I guess that's the that's the rage, you know, girls doing OnlyFans and the photos are gorgeous. <laughs> and you know, like a yeah. a lot of people, you know, like they're like, How do you do it? Like how do you not you know, like get aroused and all that. I'm like, I, I, I've learned from an early age to separate, you know, work from. I was gonna say, uh, I'm putting my bills over everything else. Yeah, uh, my this reputation. Is, this is making me money. Oh, that I was just about to say that your reputation, reputation and respect. Like it's basic respect. Like these, yeah. like it's trust. Like these people are trusting me with something so intimate. Yeah. And so, like, I'm like, no, like I'm gonna take care of that. Like, there's no way I would even like for a second think this is anything. That it's not well because again you have this conversation under the understanding that you're not a piece of shit right right so removing that word and i know you know this as well as anybody else word travels so fast in this city mm -hmm. the moment that word gets out that hey this fucking guy he hired, or he, I, I hired him to do this type of shoot, and he tried, but da 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 da. Done, canceled. Done. <laughs> you are done, and that's, and that is barring any legal issues that you run into. But yeah, you don't show your fucking business name here ever again, right? Let alone like, and it's funny because like I had this guy on here. He was telling me about because he's a wedding DJ. So he was talking about all like the like the wedding DJ scene. Didn't know that was a thing. Did not know that wedding DJing had a scene. <laughs> There's but a, a scene? But like apparently a... there is a fucking community. <laughs> oh, wow. And they are around and they all these things, right? So, and so they talk about how like, well, these, uh, like, whether it's a DJ shows up late or a caterer that doesn't bring fucking utensils. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just people that don't have their shit together. Word <laughs> travels fast in that. Yes. We were talking about music a little bit earlier. People that are hard to work with. People that don't show up on time. People that don't break down their equipment. People that, and then you obviously get into the drama of like the inner, like the inner, uh, how do we put it? The inner relations mm -hmm. of people and right? how that can ruin things. And then photography was something as intimate as that specific type of shoot yeah yeah you fuck around you're gonna find out like fucking weinstein did oh that, yeah that's exactly how it happens and it's not worth it man like it's not worth even like entertaining the no. idea hell no like even like hell no let's say like thinking selfishly like oh what's my name or like legacy or like what what are people gonna think like uh, let's that's that's a big one right like yep. and then the second one is like well i was raised you know like by uh, by a single mother to like respect yeah. like basically respect and obviously there are situations when you know, like outside of that, when you know you gotta read the room, like, oh, is this girl into me? Should I make a move? Like, obviously, um, but like in in like when it comes to work, photography, like remove it all together, all together. Like, and yeah, that's that's exactly because I because I started this podcast um, while I was in a relationship, mm -hmm. and a couple of my homies were like, dude, how does your chick let you have women over to do a podcast? You know, because it, it was so early in the in the beginning of it. It wasn't even close to what it is now and like where like people know about it and it's got like a, a small footprint like yeah. you know what i mean and so it was like yeah because she knows i'm not a fucking dick and the women and especially in the beginning just like the, with the men the female guests i was having on i had known them for years and years and years and years mm -hmm. right so they knew like they knew who i was i know who they like, it was very uh, it was a friendship like you know what i mean but now, like, just like with a lot of male guests that I've had on, I've had some female guests, like the ones that I had on on Saturday in their episode drop today. Okay. I had never met them in person. I mean, I'd seen I'd seen Natalie around. I saw her at like a slum show, and I think I ran into her at like Flying Star or some shit. Okay. Never met them in person. They were just recommended to me, you know, by a mutual friend. And but the reason why I bring all this up is like I pride myself on the fact that I have, because it's hard in media today, and I'm sure you know this with your with doing photo shoots. It's hard to create, and it's by no fault of the individual creator. It's just the the uh, maybe the stigma. It's a not maybe the stigma, but it's a it's just the culture we live in right yeah. now, where people are being exposed left and right that we thought were cool people. Yeah, and it turns out they're abusers. It turns out they're they. And they're rapists, they're predators, you know what I mean? Like, if people you would never imagine. Yeah. Like, the most recent one being Stephen Hyde, uh, Danny Mack. Oh, said. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, that was so disappointing. Like, I grew up watching that, that 70s same. show. Same, it's and one of my favorite shows. And then, so when he got canceled during the, 
pandemic and the they brought it to court and it got dropped and didn't get acquitted it got dropped i was like oh thank god of course not an asshole no now we found out he actually did that shit and he's going to jail for life which he should yeah which he should they should shoot the guy and bury him under the prison but it's like fuck man like like i fucking grew up watching that 70s show like that's so crazy so my point is is like there's a huge there's just this huge like worry now where it's like this guy just hit me up saying he liked that I did this and wants to talk to me about it. Is it really a podcast or is it something fucking weird? You know what I mean? And I pride myself on the fact that I've built a platform and I've built an area where women do feel safe yeah. to come and chat for fucking one to four hours. You know what I mean? Like that's fucking incredible. It, yeah. But like I just know for a – and I've told everyone that where this comes up, I've told them about it. It's like, hey, yeah, I – I have a female guest on. They are a guest. This is a fucking... It's fun. It's a party. If we have drinks or whatever, it's yeah. a good time. It stays there. Yes. It's because the moment, the moment there's even an idea that I'm hitting on a guest... Oh, it's done. <laughs> Wrap it up. Pack it away. There, We're there done. There's your reputation. There, exactly. And respect. And, all. and I'm not... And I will not lose that. It's like the Scarface quote where he's like, all I've got in this world is my word and my balls. And I don't break both for you. <laughs> and I'll break you... And I don't break either of them for anyone. No. And I, I think that's something that comes with age. You know, like age and like, well, like not only age, your upbringing and just like us as, you know, like men and just anybody, you know, like we, we just got to hold ourselves like accountable. And yeah. it, it just, it's disappointing when, you know, you see people that get away with shit and there's no accountability. Yeah. Um, heck, there shouldn't even be shit to get away with in the first right. place. Um, but the fact that it exists and it happens. Yeah. That's not to brush it away, but it's the fact. And the moment that that happens, like, you know, like for me, like uh, I, again, like I pride myself in that. Like if you, if you really think about it, when, when, when you say it out loud, like, Hey, like I'm having a girl come over to my studio where we're going to be locked in and, you know, this girl's going to get naked and we're going to take pictures like at, you know, to somebody that is not familiar with, it's like, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're freaking pervert. But it's like, no, like you got to understand. And, you know, like the record, you know, your, your record shows, right? Like yeah. your intentions and all that. Exactly. And the thing, like what I want to kind of like talk about, I guess, like uh, based on, you know, what, what we're talking about right now is that how you said tr uh, word travels fast and people are proactive. Like, let's say like you get a bad reputation, that bad reputation is not only going to stay with the people, but like it's going to, those people proactively are going to just bring it up. Like recently I was doing this shoot at a, a video shoot for a musician at a, at a, one of the big um, music studios. And then I met the guy that runs the studio and then proactive. Was it a bunkhouse? No, no, Bunk no. House studios. Okay, I just know a lot of people are going there now. No, and it, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to those guys here on the podcast pretty soon. The, yeah, so. it look. Have you been there? It's awesome. Badass. It's a sick studio. Badass. Yeah. So. Anyway, continue. Yeah. So they, no, but this was a music studio. Okay. Yeah, this was a music studio, and the guy that runs the studio, like uh, you know, I. First, oh, you said music, and my brain said movies. Anyway, continue. <laughs> That's why that happened. Yeah. Continue. Um, and the guy proactively, like I had just met the the owner. He's this older guy, and he's like, yeah. Are you associated or familiar with? And then he names like a group of, uh, you know, like musicians in the scene. And then at this point, you know, like I'm like, oh, I bet you this guy thinks negatively of them. But I'm like, none of my business. I'm like, oh, I heard they're doing, you know, they're doing some, some, some pretty good work. They're, they're hustling and all that. And he's like, okay, good that you're not part of them because like X, Y, and C. And I heard that they did this and that. So it's like there was no conversation leading to that. Exactly. Fuck, dude. Yes, them. <laughs> Jesus. Like air like and it it's it's so many times like uh because like I'm not one to stir drama or like to even bring it up because there's no reason to, you know, like Okay, but the, if there's common denominators spreading across many people in different areas and different like uh mm -hmm. let's say categories of entertainment, right? Like musician, uh photography, comedy, like different let's say categories of yes. art, right? Categories of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And there's a common denominator about a specific come on. 
and and it's and and now oh, it's like that's disappointing it's that's really disappointing yeah and things like like it you know kind of to bring kind of like how yeah that the, the word disappointing you know yeah. with uh just danny masterson you're like oh come on dude like not you man and you know when you hear people like within the scene and like you just start hearing all this stuff again common denominator and now it's not so much like oh we heard like allegations like people are saying the actual word of what of what's going on of what's going on and it's yeah. just like shit and yeah. you know like you start kind of like learning like oh man like you you can't associate yourself with these people and right. and you again it goes back to accountability like people gotta be accountable and just like with danny like eventually he was found accountable some other he's people, paying the price yeah fuck him some other people are about to yeah. pay the price too unfortunately and it sucks when it's like within your scene but every scene has it yeah and we just gotta learn from i guess even from their mistakes and Okay, those are not mistakes. Those are intentional things. No, too. learn. Uh, the way I put it is uh, you need to learn from other people's misery. There you go. You need to. Yeah. And not put people through misery. Simple as that. Yeah, and don't be a dick, too. Don't, yeah. Just don't, don't, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. <laughs> like, there, there's so much, like, the amount of energy that it takes to be a dick, to talk shit, to, like, hurt others. That's energy that you could be channeling into yourself. And, or... Like, like, or you just be doing nothing. You could take a nap. Yeah. You know how easy it is to not hurt people? You can just go to sleep. Go to sleep. Play the new Spider-Man game. <laughs> it's so good. It's so damn good. Don't go and uh, screw people over. So that that's kind of like... Yeah, I get you. you. You can see the real world examples within our own little town of what happens when you fuck around yes. and you yeah. find out. Or yeah. maybe they haven't found that yet, but other people are... You left a bitter taste in their mouth. Exactly. Listen, bro, this has been a fucking blast. Um, I need to have you back. Absolutely. I would love to have you back on. Um, this has been, like I said, it's been an absolutely fun conversation. Um, before we get out of here, where can people find like your website, your photography Instagram, your music Instagram, plug all your shit, all, everything you got going on? Absolutely, yes. My photography, it's a play on my name. My name is, in, in Spanish, you say it, Emanuel. So the photography is Foto Noel. So the word photo, P-H-O-T-O-N-U-E-L, photonuel.com. Instagram is photonuel. And then for my music stuff is uh, Lost in a Memory. So at Lost in a Memory on Instagram and Lost in a Memory.com on the internet. Fuck yeah. Well, thank you again, man. This has been a pleasure and I can't wait to have you back. And I know I'm going to see you around yeah. at various shows <laughs> around the city. So um, thank you everyone for listening and watching and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Oh, <laughs>